and cleanse it with the washing of water by how? By the Word of God. I'm going to show you something here, and I ain't making fun of nobody, but I'm going to tell you something. In our churches across this land, all we've been taught, if you got sin in your life, all you got to do is run to the altar and ask God to forgive me and clean me up. Is that what your Bible teaches? Is that what your Bible just taught us? I come down here and I say, Lord, forgive me. And the Lord does forgive me. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. But I'm going to tell you this. You listen to me. You hear me well. If I ain't going to get in that book, I am not going to stay clean. I am not going to change. I am not going to live for God. I'm going right back to the same dope that I did before I went to the altar. I'm going back to the same stronghold. Call it whatever you want to call it. Right here, I have to pull down strongholds. Preaching like this, I have to pull down strongholds if you believe it. Now watch, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit in conversion. We saw that, right? It's the ministry of the Scripture in the change in our lives. We saw that. Here's the third thing. It is the method of service for the Christian. What do you mean by that? All right. Watch this. Watch this. Minister of the Holy Ghost set me apart in Christ. That's my position. You can't undo it. Whoa! Y'all get a hold of this. He saved me, set me apart in the body of Christ. That's my position. I cannot, you can't change that. All right? The message of the scripture, that's change. That's God working in my life, molding me, changing me. That's called practice. Let me make a statement right here. If a Holy Ghost can save me, my position then the holy scripture can cause me to practice right hold on hold on a minute how did I get saved holy spirit listen to my statement holy spirit what keeps me clean holy scriptures Hang on. If the Holy Spirit saved me, position, the Holy Scriptures changed me, that's my practice, then I ought to be a holy saint. Y'all ain't listening. My position, Holy Ghost saved me. Am I doing okay? Am I doing all right? Holy Ghost saved me. That's my position. I can't get out. Holy Scriptures changes me. That's my practice. Or that's my, that's my, I mean, that's when the Holy Ghost, the Holy Scripture changes me. Now listen to me. Then if the Holy Spirit saves me, Holy Scripture changes me, then I ought to be a holy saint. God is trying to work on us. And here's what we want. Now, let me give you this real quick. Here's what we want. We're sanctified in our position. Can't get out of it. We ought to be sanctified in our practice. Everyday lives. Let me tell you one thing people don't practice much, and that's going to church. And yet they want to say, boy, I'm saved. I'm just as saved as the next man. Won't you practice it then? Why don't you practice your position. Watch this. Here's what we do. Oh, we're saved. We jump from the position to the purpose. Watch this. Everybody wants to say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to sing. I want to preach. 
but they don't want to practice. Y'all got it right. I have definitely got it right. My position and did my practice, and if I'm saved and the Holy Scripture and the Holy Spirit has done the work in me, then I ought to practice being a holy saint. I'm not, about, I'm not talking about a Pharisee. I'm not talking about holier than thou. I'm not talking about you thinking you're better than somebody else, but you ought to practice living right. Here's what we're going to do, though. We're going to say, man, I'm saved, and I'm going to jump to my position. You know what that's like? That's like going to second base without touching first base or going to third without touching second. But I got news for you. In the 40s, a team was down. Listen to me. Guy hits a home run. The guy on second runs home. The guy that was on that hit the home run, back then you had to touch every base. The guy that was on second missed third base. Guy hit the home run, missed first base, and ran on by. Everybody screaming out, "Wow!" Guess what? They didn't win. Game over. Let me tell you this. Here's our problem. We want to go to second, or we want to go to first and third without going to second. First is our position. Third is that purpose. We, don't, we want to miss second base to practice. We want God to use us, God to touch us, God to feel us. God, just put your hand on me. I don't have to live right, just touch me. When I go in there and play or sing or preach, you just touch me. But I ain't going to second. I am not going to practice holiness. You know I got it right. You know I'm telling you right. All right, I'm going to close. Listen to this. Listen to me. There's positional sanctification. That's when you get saved. There's practical sanctification. That's when you get in the Scripture. There's progressive As you start growing, God starts using different things to grow you. It's called progressive. Uh, I've been preaching 46 years. I don't expect, Brother Clay, you've been preaching a long time. I don't expect somebody that's been preaching six months to preach like me and him does. And you shouldn't expect it either. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. But it's progressive. What do you mean progressive? Well, Joseph wound up being top man in Egypt. But he had to go to the pit first. When they got him out of the pit, they sent him down to a caravan, and he wound up in prison. Progressive. Everything going on in your life ain't, listen to me, it might hurt. Listen to my statement. It might hurt you, but it ain't going to harm you. It hurt to be in prison, but it didn't harm you. It hurt to be in that pit, but it didn't harm you. It's called progressive. Thank God for growing us. Sometimes. I just left a guy that ain't used to being down never in his life. He's got a broken arm, knee all swelled up, looks like a cantaloupe, can't hardly walk. Got still got some fluid on his lungs, his back's killing him, kidney stones they just crushed. He's not used to being down. Do you know what I told him? God. God is still in charge of your knee and your arm and your kidney stones and your back and everything you're going through. And if you don't believe that, you're going to be the most miserable, stinking Christian that ever lived. 
God's always got another plan. Positional, I'm saved. Practical, got to live it. Progressive, just grow me. But I'm closing. One day it'll be permanent. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to be set apart and I'm going to unrobe and re-robe and I'm going to be dressed in white, fine linen, the righteousness of the saints of God and I'm going home permanently. Hallelujah. You know, I told somebody the other day, stay here. Stay here. Stay here in this mess. Not me. You think it's close? I'll tell you what I believe. I believe old Gabriel's licking his lips. Amen. And he's just waiting for God the Father to say to God the Son, Go get your bride. And the trump of God is going to sound. Permanent. So Paul said to the church at Corinth who are sanctified. Amen. Next time the devil, Brother Greg, tells you that you ain't fit to serve him, next time he tries to tell you to quit, what you need to do is look at him and say, look, I can't quit. Couldn't if I wanted to because I'm sanctified in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know what that means? You know what that means? Let me show you what that means. I'm closing. I promise. I just get excited when I do this. You know what that means? That means you went to God and you said, Hey, you know what, Lord? I'm throwing in the towel. I'm throwing in the towel. And God said, son, you can't throw in the towel. You know why you can't? You're sanctified in my son. And I won't let you throw in the towel. And if you do, I'll bring chastening. into your life because you're not going to make a mockery of my son. Let's stand. Let's stand. Straight up truth for a messed up church. We need to know what sanctification really is. Amen. Brother Clay, dismiss us. God bless you for being here. Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Wow. Pray for Brother Joe. Amen. Brother Clay, pray.